Jim Jordan has once again lost his bid to become speaker. That is the third time in this week and by the biggest margin. Again, usually you're supposed to go in the opposite direction and you get fewer and fewer no votes. He's getting more and more and more no votes. But just a little bit ago, there has also been a secret GOP ballot as to whether Jordan should drop out or not. We're gonna get the results, I believe, shortly. What's crazy about this, guys, is that if you follow the news on Thursday morning, Jim Jordan was not going to run again. He, in fact, was going to pass the baton to the acting speaker, Patrick McHenry, and say, look, I'm out, guys. Then there was a GOP meeting. Maybe it wasn't secret, and they were like, what the hell are you doing? You get back in there, and you get the goddamn votes. And so he got back in there, and he lost yet again. So uh, there are three of three more folks jumped on the not Jordan train. Uh, we're talking uh, Tom Keene Jr., Brian Fitzpatrick, and Mark Moliano, oh, Molinaro. I don't know why I can't say that right. Let's uh, throw up this graphic right here, and you can sort of see from first to third round here how many um, how many he's losing. Look at Jeffrey's losing two votes. Where did those guys go? Are they just at lunch or something? Oh, yeah, or they- I wonder if. If you add them up, I've seen reports that in the third vote, all Democrats voted for Jeffrey. So it might have been all the present Democrats. Got it, got it, got it. But so there you go, 25, he he cannot close that gap. Um, So this was Jordan yesterday, I guess. We'll see what he says today. But this is what he said yesterday about why he decided, Oh no, I'm back in the race. Take a look. We made the pitch to um, members on the resolution as a way to lower the temperature and get back to work. Uh, We decided that wasn't where we're gonna go. I'm still running for speaker and I plan to go to the floor uh, and get the votes and win this race. But I wanna go talk with a a few of my colleagues, particularly I wanna talk with the 20 individuals who voted against me um, so that we can move forward and begin to work for the American people. Well, he ran out of time there, guys, because he didn't talk to the people who flipped against him in that third vote. Um, but finally, you know, we talked about this yesterday, Brett, but the uh, tactics that are being used to cajole Republicans into voting for Jim Jordan are things like texting their wives, um, which is, you know, kind of a scary tactic generally. Um, here's Ken Buck, uh, who did, I believe, was one of the people who flipped. Oh no, sorry, who did not vote for Jim Jordan, um, talking about all the the threats, the death threats actually, and the other pressure he's received for opposing Jordan as speaker. Part of the reason that there's temper right now is this uh, constant barrage of phone calls. We have, Mm. I have six full-time people answering the phones. I have 20,000 messages from people where we couldn't. So far, I've had four death threats. I've been evicted from my uh, office in uh, the, in Colorado. Uh, I have notice of an eviction um, because the landlord is mad with my uh, voting record uh, on on the speaker issue. Um, And everybody in the conference is getting this. So, so it's natural. Uh, Family members, have been approached and and threatened, Uh, all kinds of things are going on. There's gonna be some uh, some tension. Four death threats, Congressman, because you're not supporting Jim Jordan? That's right. Okay, that's just wild. Like that is absolutely insane. Brett, I want your reactions to what is that, what the MAGA movement has really done to the Republican Party here. Well, we'll see. I mean, America has like this very short, um, memory in a 20, uh, 24 second news cycle. Um, and so who knows? Like after this all happens and it shakes out, like they're like, Oh my God, can you believe McCarthy was ousted as president, as a, you know, speaker of the house? Everything was so fine. And they forgot that it took 18 votes to get the guy in in the first place. I think the worst thing we can do for America is to have Jim Jordan as Speaker of the House. You know it's not going for Jim Jordan when he, for the first time in his entire life, says, let's bring the temperature down on this. <laughs> like that guy, him being Speaker of the House is going to be the absolute worst thing in the universe because he's just the crappiest. Yeah. Um, I am. I just think it's really surprising. I mean, it's not surprising at all, but the ways that Republicans are getting the death threats from their own party, their own caucus, and they have a question. They have a question to answer, which is, are we going to be strong armed um, by the lunatics in the base or not? And the answer to that is always and usually been yes. But what's interesting is that here you actually not just have 
Like, I think politically they're on board with Jordan. They're not resistant to Jordan because of his politics. They're resistant because they don't like his like approach because he's not doing a good enough job in uh, like broaching their support, getting their support. He doesn't, he's not promising them anything that they want to hear. Like he's not delivering even the manner clearly in which he's trying to get the votes. Same with Kevin McCarthy. Clearly they are failing. They are not able to reach a consensus. They're not able to bring their caucus on board. So like it is beyond the politics, but it's interesting that they're being the backlash is very much in line with some of the politics that they have um, fanned the flames of, which is violence. <laughs>